Many of the foundational commands in X-Design use sketch profiles as the basis for the 3D feature. The four commands I'll cover in this lesson, extrude, revolve, sweep, and loft, are all generated using at least one or two sketch profiles, depending on the command. This makes it important to understand how each of these features is created and how you want to create sketch geometry. Not only is generating the 3D geometry important, being able to make modifications to the features is an integral aspect of the modeling process. X-Design allows you to switch settings with just a few clicks. For instance, an extrude feature can be switched from Add to Cut, which switches adding geometry to removing geometry. Additionally, X-Design includes what's called Super Features, which allow you to switch the feature type in the Design Manager. This can be switching an extrude to a revolve or changing a fillet to a chamfer. In this lesson, I'll show you how to create an extrude, a revolve, a sweep, and a loft to create a steering wheel design. Then I'll show you how to switch between feature operations and using super features to switch this VGA adapter from male to female. This steering wheel shown here was created using a few different features. The hub of the wheel at the center was made using the extrude command. The outer circular grip of the wheel was made using the revolve command. A single curved spoke was made using the sweep command. And the unique cutout at the center was made using the loft command. I'll step you through how to make each of these from the starting sketches. Here you can see all the sketch entities used to create the features. The only exception is the star patterned sketch at the center of the wheel, which is hidden right now and will be shown a bit later. First, I want to make the hub using the extrude command. The extrude command takes a sketch profile and moves it along a path perpendicular to the sketch plane, creating 3D geometry. From the feature tab, I can click on extrude and the dialog box appears. I'll be sure the settings at the top are set to add and solid, then select the largest circle as the sketch profile. Set the distance to blind, which allows for the feature to be set to a specific numerical depth, and change the depth distance to 25 millimeters. A preview appears, and I want to make sure the geometry is extending backward away from this front side of the sketch plane, which I can change by clicking the reverse direction button here. The preview looks good, so I'll click OK. and the first solid feature is complete. Next, I'd like to create the outer circular grip of the wheel. I'll create it using the revolve command, which takes a sketch profile and moves it along a circular path around an axis. I'll enable the revolve command by clicking this icon. And I need to make two selections, one for the axis to revolve around and the sketch profile I want to use. For the axis, I'll select this line here that I created in a sketch and I'll choose the circle as the profile. Notice down below for direction one, there are different options available, which allows you to set how far the profile moves along the circular path. This can be a full revolve, which goes along the entire circle, or the other options can be used to have it travel only part of the length of the circular path. I'll choose full revolve for now, and click OK to create the geometry. This creates a multi-body component where the wheel grip and the hub at the center are disconnected. Now the outer grip is complete and I want to move on to adding a curved spoke that connects it to the hub at the center. To do this, I'll create a sweep feature which takes a sketch profile and moves it along a custom sketched path. This means I'll be taking a circle that's at the center of the hub and moving it along this curved path. I'll enable the sweep command Select one of the segments of the curved sketch as the path for the sweep. Then select the circular sketch from the Design Manager as the sweep profile. Leave the rest of the settings at the default and click OK. Notice how the spoke's solid geometry has a circular cross-section 
that travels along the length of the entire curb. This sweep feature now connects the hub and the outer grip of the wheel together. The last feature I want to create is a custom cutout at the center of the wheel. I have a hexagon sketch that's been hidden. I'll go ahead and show this sketch, which will be used to create a custom cutout by connecting this sketch with the smaller circular sketch on the front of the hub. The loft command allows me to create a feature that connects two sketch profiles that are different in shape and size. To create this cutout, I'll enable the loft command shown here. Make sure I set the operation to cut to remove geometry from the hub. Click on the circular sketch profile, then the hexagon located at the center of the hub, and click OK. The finished wheel will have multiple spokes included, and right now there's only one. I'll quickly use a circular pattern command to add the other spokes, which in this case isn't a sketch-based feature. I'll enable the command, select the outer edge of the hub to set the axis, choose the sweep feature from the design manager, set the instances to 5, and click OK. Now the steering wheel is complete.